Okay, so we're going to take a look at uh, sections 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5, uh, and starting out here with programs and programming languages. So we talked about in the previous one, you know, what is a program well, set of instructions telling your computer what to do. Uh, so we have programming languages that we use to make it easier for us. Uh, and by making it easier for us, uh, it, it means that we're able to, to uh, develop code, and then our code is converted uh, into a language the computer can can uh, understand and uh, but it, it really all just comes down to uh, languages making it easier for us so like for example if you're coming out of CIS2 uh, you probably did Python programming and uh, Python is a very easy language to learn how to uh, how to use and so a lot of uh, new intro computer science classes are starting with that for their new new programmers uh, really easy to learn very powerful you can do a lot with it uh, as you get into more advanced features of the language um, but that's kind of an, an easier language to start with C++ is also very intuitive I, I think uh, an easy language to, to learn at least on the basic side of things so it's uh, I don't know it's kind of fun to see the different languages uh, in fact, here are a few on this particular slide, so you can see some different ones that we have. Uh, let's see, not here currently, but we have some of these uh, in class. Of course, some of these are a lot older, uh, maybe not used uh, as frequently as uh, they were, you know, quite a few number of years ago. But anyway, so just some examples of some languages. Um, so a set of instructions uh, that we will use uh, for for our programs, uh, always known as an algorithm. So here we go, a set of well-defined steps to perform a task or solve a problem. So order is important. Uh, steps must be performed sequentially, at least for now. Uh, and then we will develop some other things a little bit later on. So when we get into object-oriented programming and uh, you know play with sending things and pulling things through different areas, uh, you'll see it doesn't doesn't always have to be sequentially, but when we're starting out right here, it is. So, and typically you have many different algorithms that you'll have, uh, so you're trying to solve problems along the way. Uh, different types of languages, so high level, and low level. Uh, so low level, uh, you can see in your user communication with computer hardware directly, not easy for us to understand. So machine language, or you can see on your little bit of binary here, uh, versus a high level, uh, so when you think about uh, some of these language classes that we offer here, so like Visual Basic, Python, C++, Java, uh, it's easier for us to understand. So closer to the English language, and it's easier for us to understand as programmers. So we're able to use these languages and then uh, let the computer do the work to decipher it down to a language that uh, that it needs to understand. Um, so from a high level to uh, an executable file, if we kind of look at this graphic, I'll then I'll back up here in a second, so you can see as it's flowing through uh, this particular thing. So we've got different pieces that we'll look at. So I'm going to go, ahead and go back, and then we'll look at this in the end. So you, if you've got source code, so here's your um, your, your piece. So you've got you know some type of source file running the preprocessor. Uh, it's going to change those up a little bit. Uh, it, so you can see kind of how, how it's working here. Run on the compiler and all, these things are are working at kind of at the same time as they're as they're rocking through here uh so we're running the compiler it's storing it uh changing it up storing it uh, again runs a linker finally producing an exe file some type of executable file doesn't have to be exe but some type of, of uh, executable file um often at the same time it's doing this at least from our point of view seeing it the computer is doing a lot of things in the background when you are building something or testing it debugging it whatever it might be right so um and and you'll see this kind of firsthand as we uh, walk through these things so errors along the way will prevent this from working well certain types of errors so we'll talk about a couple different types of errors here in a sec um so again here's our graphic just flowing through the process and again we're just clicking a button and letting the computer do the work for us on the translating side to get down to a piece that we can use and that it can use too. Um, so putting this all together, using an IDE, so integrated development environment, uh, we use this, it has a lot of pieces to it. So a text editor, a compiler, a debugger, uh, there could be other utilities along the way. Uh, a nice little user interface that ties them all together. You'll find with, uh, oh, like for example, with REPL, um, I don't know if it's REPL or REPL, I still don't know that. But anyway, so REPL.IT, when we use that uh, particular IDE, it's a great cloud-based one for us to play with. Uh, it also offers Offers, I mean, we can add another bullet point down here and offers cloud storage. You know, it's a it's a free thing. It's great. Uh, another one that we'll use through PythonTutor.com. We'll use their C++ Tutor, and uh, that soft that particular site lets you go through and see things step by step, so you can see the code running and what the computer is doing. In the
the background and how it's storing things and, and all that. So the IDs are very, very important. Uh, if you've taken Visual Basic uh, or maybe just you know other languages and maybe you've used Visual Studio, very powerful IDE for Microsoft. So you can do lots and lots and lots of things with it. Uh, so, so your IDE, your environment is very, very important. Um, common elements, these are just some keywords that, that we'll talk about and you'll see as we go through them, you, you'll see these again and again. So keywords, um, otherwise known as reserved words. So these are things that can only be used for a spe specific purpose. So example like the, uh, the word print. Um, so that can't be used as a variable name. Um, you know, that's a, that's a reserved word. Well, I mean, I guess you go capital. We'll talk about that later on when we get to variables. But, but certain things are, are, uh, are reserved so that you are only using them for a specific task. Um, operators, we'll get to those in a second too. Punctuation, we'll look at all these in in, a, in another slide here in a second. We'll, we'll kind of break these down a little bit. In fact, let's just let's just move forward real quick, and then we'll talk about those more uh, in just just a few minutes. Um, and look, quick example program as we're uh, taking a look at this. So this is an actual executable program that runs. Um, we've got a few components to this here. This all makes sense to you as we get rolling a little bit. We're using our na the namespace standard STD. That's what that stands for. Um, uh, input output stream so we're including different things and, and again we'll break this down as we get into it more uh, this is our main function so we have a few things here that we're defining so double this is a type of uh, number is a float and so we're saying hey we want to store this and we're saying that this is a variable name num1 equals five and so, hey, we're saying that equals five. We're also declaring num2 and sum as a double and then ending it with this punctuation, semicolon. You will learn to hate them, <laughs> I'd say it. Uh, but uh, you'll see semicolons, uh, if you forget it, when you need one, then you'll get an error. Uh, it's, uh, you'll see, you'll see. There's uh, So almost everything uh, ends with a semicolon. Um, this is a, this entire line right here. So we've got double num1 equals five comma. This is one continuous statement. That's why there's only one, that's all there's only semicolon here. And there's a comma here. This continues down to this line and keeps going. Um, so anyway, so that's that. Again, we'll look at more of that in chapter two. Uh, so you'll see that later on. Uh, so again, another uh, thing here. So num2 equals 12. So we've got all these little pieces in here that we're that we're doing. Um, we could argue about the best way of doing this or uh, other ways. But for now, we're just looking at this. Then we're giving it we're saying hey sum equals these two values added up and then we're printing them so we have a little statement here this is our c out statement so an output uh and uh, in quotes it would put the sum is notice they included a space here so it offset um and it's going to print the value of sum in here and then return that's basically the end um so real simple uh program here we'll look at a lot of this in fact this is probably this exact thing in uh in chapter two um, okay, so let's break this down a little bit. So we talked about at that other slide, we had a few things on there. So keywords, so reserve words have special meaning, can't use them for anything else, um, typically all lowercase. Uh, so example for this one right here. Uh, so these are two different types of numbers. So we have a double and an integer. And so double is the type of flow. We have num1. So this is our little piece in here. So our reserve words here are double and int. So if I tried to make a variable name and I tried to call it double, I'm going to get an error. It's not going to work. It won't let me do it because the um, C++ language knows that, hey, the word double is reserved. I can't use it for anything else. Same thing with the abbreviation for integer, int. I can't use that for anything else. So um, that, that's the way that reserve works work we will talk more about those uh in chapter two and other chapters too um operators so here we go with um we have assignment and then we have our math operators so like plus minus and there are more but uh these are some of the ones that that uh, we'll use and you can see them in green here so num2 here's our little assignment in here here's another assignment with an equal sign here's a, a math operator so operators just uh these are some typical ones that you use over and over and over again and we'll look at some of the others too as we uh, kind of roll along uh, punctuation i mentioned the semicolon comma is very important too so if you look at this line from that other program uh you know, double, and then we've got num1 here, and then num2 sum, and then we've got this little piece in here. We, uh, well, well, we'll look at this later on and, and talk about other ways of doing this piece and better ways, perhaps, and this whole piece, actually. So anyway, we'll, we'll look at that later on. But punctuation, semicolons, ending a statement. So this is an entire statement. Uh, this is a statement going from double, num1 equals 5, comma, and continuing down here, num2, sum, now the end of that whole statement. Just because it 
went down a line doesn't mean that's the end of the statement. So this is a this is a line, this is a line, this is a line, but this is a statement, and then this is a statement. Okay. Uh, let's see. Programmer defined uh, identifiers. So these are variables. So different things. Uh, your variables are going to take up uh, you know memory locations, and and we look at how that works later on, uh, and and how it stores and the size that it's storing and and all that kind of stuff. So we'll take a look at that. But uh, some typical variables you might use here. So we're def we're declaring the variables, defining or declaring them as as doubles, and we're saying I'm going to use hours, I'm going to use rate, and I'm going to use pay all as uh, variables. So um, those are going to be the names of my variables. And then I'm going to set uh, values equal to these. So if you have a CN where you're asking the user, how many hours did you work this week? Then it, it, when the user types it in and uh, you know hits enter, uh, it's going to store whatever value they enter as the value for hours so that later on in the program, if you say hours times rate, for example, it's going to know to take hours from that. Uh, and have it have it defined. So we look a lot of that in chapter two. Um, different types of errors. I mentioned this just really quickly. Um, we have syntax errors and logic errors. So these are the main ones that we'll that we'll be seeing. Um, syntax errors are problems with you know you use the keyword for a variable, can't do it. You forgot a semicolon, can't you know gotta have it in there, and it will happen. Trust me. It happens all the time. Um, your operators may be different. Maybe you meant to put two plus two, and instead you put two minus two. Um, so using the right operator is a big deal. So things that will prohibit the program from executing. Um, and in fact, that's part of a logic error too. So if you use minus and plus, um, if you use an operator that perhaps, I guess under syntax errors, if we're talking about um, an operator that won't work properly. Uh, so maybe you're trying to use a mod as, a, as an operator. So we'll look at modulus later on too. Uh, if you're trying to use a mod, it has to be declared as a certain type of, uh, of number. So little things along the way for syntax errors. All right. So typically you're going to see um, punctuation, um, something wrong uh, with the way that you've typed a line. Nine times out of 10, it's a typo. You know, you just forgot something or you clipped another key as you're trying to, you know, enter something along the way. Okay. So those are the types of things you'll see. Logic errors are um, things actually, like I mentioned a second ago with the operator, if you meant to put two uh, plus two instead of two minus two, that would fall under more of a logic error, right? So the program will run, but have incorrect results. So using the wrong variables. So you've defined hours uh, and maybe defined minutes. So in trying to figure out, you know, what time it is or whatever, right? And you mean to call back minutes and instead you call hours, okay? So um, the, using the wrong variable, entering incorrect data, those kinds of things. The computer will execute the code if it's, you know, if it's working properly, if there are no syntax errors, but when the with a, a logic error, it's just there's something wrong, and you'll see this. This will pop up. You'll uh, you'll have a program, and and you'll be wanting it to do something, whether it's some type of math operation, and you'll get an answer, and you go, whoa, 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 that, that that can't be right. And then you look, and oh yeah, you had a logic error. So anyway, two different types. Uh, lines versus statement. We talked about this already, just really quickly. Um, so you have uh, a few a few things here. So um, this is a line. So you can see the line numbers here. So so this is a line. This is a line. Um, even even three. Uh, this is just a, a blank line, uh, and it just helps us as far as being able to read it a little better. The computer doesn't care when the computer goes into uh, compile mode and it it uh, comes down to the code that it's going to use. Uh, it gets rid of all the spaces, it gets rid of all the white space. All right. So it doesn't care about this. This would go away. Um, doesn't care about this, this, this. Right. But these are all things to make it easier for us to understand. So lines versus statements. So I'm, I'm already mentioned that on another slide, so I don't need to beat that to death. But anyway, so you're um, your, your lines can go down. You could have two lines that make a statement like you saw earlier, uh, or like these, these are just all just simple lines that you have. And this is a statement, this is a statement, this is a statement. So anyway, so that's that's that little little piece there. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a single statement that uses two lines right here. So another one that, that we're looking at from earlier. So here here's one here. So even though it has a comma here and we're going down to the next line, doesn't matter. These are two lines, yes, but one statement until you get to the equal sign. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it there. Okay, so for the variables, when we're looking at, at variables on here, and if we were to consider, you know, how, how are 
information is stored, uh, you know, what we're doing with, um, well, we use variables a lot. So, so you'll see, you'll store a lot of uh, information because if you're taking input from a user, you have to, you're going to store it as a variable, uh, you know, most of the time. So you'll have, uh, you'll have a variable that's being stored. So when you have, um, you ask a question I mentioned earlier, like, let's say we're asking how many hours did you work this week? So you may have hours declared as a variable and then their answer will be stored as hours. So it may say hours equals, you know, 10 or whatever they put in there right so um so that that is a variable so and we'll change these a lot if you have um when you're setting these like let's for example let's look at this so if i say right now num1 equals seven and that's the end of it that's my statement uh, great we're good we're assuming you declared it earlier uh and so we have uh lines of code that are right here and we go down through here and then all of a sudden in our code we say num1 equals five all of a sudden now the seven is gone and it's replaced with five. So you have to be a little bit careful on how you do things, how you do your variable naming that you don't, you know, have something uh, overwrite another uh, variable that you might need or an input that was, uh, you know, put in by the by the user. So you have to be really careful of that. But variables are uh, are kind of fun. We get to play with them a lot in uh, in chapter two. So you get to see that. And of course, we'll use variables throughout the whole book. But chapter two, we really get to play around with a little bit. And um, by defining them or declaring them, we have to say, uh, you know, right here we're saying, hey, this is this is equal to this. Great. Um, declaring means that maybe up above this somewhere we said double uh, num one just to say that hey, it's going to be a double or int num one, so to say that it's going to be uh, set up that way. And when we look at variables, and you can have that all as one line on one statement, you can say, you know, int num one equals seven. So and we'll look a lot of that in chapter two. I keep saying that, but but uh, again, we're just kind of getting into it a little bit. Okay. So and the last uh, piece that we'll look at on this before we get to the next uh, uh, video for the end of the chapter: um, input, output, and processing. Or I'm sorry, input, processing, and output. So uh, just three steps: gathering input. Input. It can be from a keyboard or mouse. It can be from or reading a drive, uh, something something on your hard drive that we're reading a, a file or a database. Uh, it could be the user just typing something and adding it or processing it, and uh, and then having some type of output, which for most of the stuff that we're going to do is going to just be uh, displaying it on the screen. So um, anyway, so that's out for that section, and we'll have the the last video, and well, you see the next section. So in 1.6.